Hello and good day everybody at the Lutz Academy. Jeremiah here again to show you guys some more base tips and tricks. Last lesson we talked about proper posture and holding the base in a comfortable position. And today I'm going to talk about picking, pick techniques, picks in general. And again, everything I showed you in last lesson with your posture and holding the base, it plays an important role in what we're doing today. So hopefully you got comfortable with your base and found a nice comfortable place where you can sit up and practice. So, before I show any techniques or whatever, I'm just going to talk about picks. I like a .88 mil. It's got a little bit of flex to it, but it's still got a nice attack. It feels soft when you're hitting the strings. Here, it's got a little bit of snap. I'll just play that with the, my thumb and you'll hear the difference. So you can hear how the pick has a bit more pop. I play a lot of rock and metal and uh, I need that pick sometimes just to be able to lock in with those fast metal grooves. To play that with my fingers would be uh, quite the feat. So uh, pick comes in handy and I'm a strong believer that being fluent with your fingers and your pick is the best way if you want to be an accomplished bass player. So I'm going to start with the heaviest pick. I got a one and a half mil solid pick here. I do believe that's a turtle that the logo's worn off there. And this is uh, very abrasive. And very little flex, but just to give you a quick sample of what it would sound like. See how that's, uh, you can hear every, get a little bit of a click on top of your note, but it can be used. Now I'm going to go to the opposite end of the spectrum here. I got a 0.60 mil, very flexible, not uh, a pick I would recommend for bass playing, but it could serve a purpose for some nice soft. You hear how there's a lot less <laughs> abrasiveness to the way that was sounded. And then here I got a 73, I believe. Yes, a 0.73 mil. And I actually use this gauge a lot when I'm recording because it's very clean, not too abrasive, but still cuts. And then uh, a good old one mil which is a very heavy, little bit more flex than the mil and a half. And these are all nylon picks made by Dunlop. My favorite because you can't break them. The only way you destroy them is if you wear them out and usually you'll end up losing them before that ever happens. So, so next time you're in the music store, feel free to grab a couple different gauges. They're only like 50 cents to a dollar a piece and uh, you can try them out and see what feels comfortable for you. So I'm going to go back to my .88 mil because it's my favorite and we're going to talk about uh, picking technique here. Like I said last week, you want to be sitting up straight, have your knees at a 90 degree angle, neck aimed out so you can do the full motion top to bottom without having to torque on your wrist. And then you got your arm in that spot right here, like where your thumb would be here, but we need your thumb to hold the pick today. So another technique for when you're picking is I find a put my pinky finger and my ring finger, not really pulling on the bottom string, but just there as a place to set it there. And you can actually use that to give you a little bit of uh, stability. And uh, I got my five string here today, so we're just gonna pick down. We wanna be picking straight as possible. I have a bit of a, I come this way, and that's just kind of a habit I picked up over the years. But ideally, you want to be as straight to the strings as possible. So just right now, we're going to just work on some down strokes on the low strings. Just feel how that pick rides across there. And you want it nice and smooth. So now, just pick a string, and we're just going to do steady down stroke. And one, and two. Now we'll move to the A string and do the same thing. And one and two and three and four. And one and two and three and four. Just get a feel for that. Down, down, steady groove. If you have a metronome um, and you're doing some of these simple exercises I'm going to show you, I would recommend pulling it out and just having that tick, 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 tick. So that way as you're practicing, you're building up your timing skills too, right? You, eventually that clock will be in the back of your head just ticking, but... If you practice without a metronome for too long, then uh, you're missing out on a very important element of music timing. So 
If you don't have one, that'd be something maybe looking into. I know a lot of the phones have metronome apps now, or you might have a drum machine. You can just program a snare, kick, snare, kick. There's a lot of options. Just it'll make practicing actually more fun, and you'll gain a lot more out of it. Even on these simple exercises that you think might be that important to you, but uh, they are. So we're going to try that again. Pick a string and just one, two, three, four. Steady down, 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 down. And you want to uh, minimize the movement. You don't want to be like whole arm and wrist moving. You just want to keep it nice and tight. Your wrist barely is moving too. Just a subtle movement. Mostly it's in your thumb. See how my, my wrist is kind of staying there. My thumb's coming up. So basically my thumb and my pointer finger that's holding the other pick there is the only thing moving. And I'm just going to show you how I hold the pick. There is no real set rule, but you want a good grip on it so you're not going to lose it. So on the top half, my thumb is about 50% of the pick grabbed on. On the bottom half, I'm going a little bit less, so there's about 60% to 65% of the pick showing. And that way I'm not ratcheting my fingers on the strings when I'm picking. And there's lots of room for a nice clean pick. So once you got that down comfortably, try it on all the strings. And uh, play with that, because th that is going to come into some exercises when I start breaking down scales for you. So you want to be very fluent at down and also alternate. So now we're going to talk about alternate picking, which is up-down motion. So again, this is where not having your whole arm moving around when you're picking comes into play because you want to be very tight and precise. So we're just going to, on my E string here, this is my five string here. So today my E string is right here, the second string on this bass, so I don't avoid confusion with some of you. So we got down, up, down, up down up so i'm gonna do that counting one and two and one and two and one and two so the key is to make sure that upstroke is almost as consistent with the pressure the tone as the down and in rhythm with it and it's a little tricky at first so it might take a bit of time don't be discouraged if you're uh, struggling to keep it smooth and again, just same as the other one. Pick another string and... And another string. And just work that. Up, down, up, down, up, down. And uh, like that alternate picking, if you want to play some really fast stuff, you need that skill, right? Because it's hard to get it really fast if it's all down right but if you're alternating you can almost twice as fast and uh, that's why like I said I think it's important that you learn how to pick as well as finger pick it's a different tone it's a different feel it's a different vibe and I know a lot of your favorite bass players probably use their fingers but uh, at one point they might have used a pick there's no real set rule there is a nice tone to play in the bass when you use your fingers. That's undeniably the truth there. But uh, like I said, I play a lot of rock and metal. So when I'm doing a set, some nights I'll have my pick and I'll also be plucking. So it's like a hybrid. And then one song I'll be, I'll, you tuck my pick away, fingers. And I know if i got a fast part coming up, I'll grab my pick and I'm there. So there's some songs where I'm using both. And then vice versa, right? Just switching back and forth. It's good to have the extra skills in your arsenal. So practice those two little exercises. Down, 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 up, down, up, down, up. And next lesson, I'll get into some finger picking tricks to get you started on that end too. And then once we got a little bit of that down, we'll start talking about scales and some exercises and get some music coming out of your bass here. But it's good to get these basic fundamentals down before you get too far ahead of yourself and eventually it'll all tie together so hope you enjoyed today's lesson and i will see you next time till next time